ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Uncensored. I am your host, Jordan Maskell, broadcasting, of course, from my studio in High Level, Alberta. Great guest on the show today. He's a comedian and co-host of the Anthony Cumia Show on Compound Media. I'd like to welcome Detroit's own Dave Landau to the show. So, Dave, thank you very much, man, for coming on and uh, and no problem and taking some time. And first of all, I want to I want to congratulate you on one year at Compound Media. I can't believe. Thank you. When you get older, too, it seems that uh, seems that the years always go by super quick and and stuff. So, what was sort of that year like uh, working uh, working in New York? Uh, it's really been an amazing year, you know. I've uh, it, it definitely has had its you know uh, ups and downs, learning experiences. Um, fortunately, I I knew a lot of people. So getting into the clubs and all that was was relatively easy because I had already done shows so many times here in TV. But um, yeah, dude, like I getting brought in to, as third mic to Artie and Anthony was crazy. It was two of my heroes, and then now I sit next to Anthony, who's one of my heroes every day, and it's it's just amazing. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. Like mm-hmm. I never thought that would be a <laughs> something I was even able to do. So it's 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 surreal. For sure. And uh, let me tell you something. That's exactly my dream job right there because Ant's a, a hero of mine as well. You know, he's been, uh, you know, I guess uh, inadvertently a huge influence on on my broadcasting career. Uh, the fact that I'm sitting in front of a green screen right now is because of Anthony. The fact that I have right. th- these uh, this exact sort of microphone set up, not exactly. I'm using an XLR microphone, and you guys have have fancier microphones. But this is whole the whole thing ba- was based because I saw Anthony doing this, uh, and then I'm just like, holy shit, like. You know, it kind of inspired me to do it. And and he's a great broadcaster, a great host. But I think that having somebody such as yourself adds a whole nother dynamic uh, to the show because I've been a subscriber since uh, October 2014 and uh, and I've seen the show grow over time. And so I really like where it's at right now. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see how it went from just his basement all the way to this and uh yeah i mean dude i'm i'm having a blast i just taught we just sit there and say terrible shit for two hours i mean it's just a dream job you know it's four days a week and i love it and i I appreciate you subscribing and if anybody wants to subscribe you can go to compoundmedia.com but yeah i i I don't really know what else to say other than it's pretty awesome i mean the city itself is a shithole Mm -hmm. but uh everything else about it is pretty cool yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not much of a city person myself. Uh, I lived in Hamilton, Ontario, for uh, for I think it was like seven or eight years when I went to Mohawk College, did the journalism program. Uh, I'm currently right now in the last town from the Northwest Territories border in Alberta. So I'm originally from southwestern Ontario, where still in a farming community. But like, say for example, Detroit, I was like a couple hours drive away, or for Toronto or something like that. Up here, right. in, up here in the north, there's fucking nothing. But I really f- like the appeal because there's the lack of people. So I can only imagine kind of what a a pain in the ass New York could be. Oh, dude, it would just be the polar <laughs> opposite. Did you say Mohawk College? Mohawk College, yeah. They, uh, that's awesome. It, that's it was the in, best name I've ever heard. It not not such a. I I love the fact that I I met great people like my friend Marconi or Michelle. You know, shout out to those guys. Uh, but you know, in terms of like colleges, like to take a lot of your money, Dave. So I recently yes, they do. I recently paid off a debt where it was like fourteen grand and. It it essentially took me moving away because I we, you and I probably you know everybody's worked shitty jobs before. I worked at a call center oh, yeah. and and red water meters for I, example. I did a call center for a day. How, uh, yes, well, so you didn't even you didn't even last, eh? No, I uh, went eight hours and I was like, this is the worst, and I left. It was uh. <laughs> Yeah, it was selling like rust inhibitor for cars, oh. and they gave you yeah. And all I did was yeah. get, I, all, people just swore at me all day. Oh, and you I was were like, I'm good. You were doing outbound. See, I I was working for Direct Energy, so people were calling me for when they had no heat or hot water. So you would get like 
I'd want to go for a cigarette or something like that, or you know, I'd be stoned a lot at at work. And sure, th- they would call up and they'd be like, "Oh, we have a hundred calls in queue." Well, fuck, you want to go out for a cigarette? So you drop all those calls. It's like, oh, the the queue's cleared, and you go outside. But now d- doing uh, moving away, and I'm a, I'm a freelance journalist up here, multimedia entrepreneur in the north. We've got a lot of projects going on, uh, so it's just nice to like see something and then take a. I guess take a change and, and a move. Was it sort of a, a transition for you to go from Detroit to New York or are they similar, uh, similar type cities? Um, they are similar in a lot of ways, but uh, it was definitely a transition. I mean, Detroit is uh, largely suburban. I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, equally dangerous, if not more dangerous city, but you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't too big of a shock. It's just a different attitude, though. Like it, Detroit is still part of the Midwest. You know, it's there's still a friendlier attitude there, believe it or not. And mm-hmm. getting used to it here, where people just slam into you, don't make eye contact, don't say thank you. It, it takes a minute to get used to that because I think everywhere else in the country, that's not really how it. Uh, at least yeah. how people present themselves, you know. Well, a lot so of times, definitely, a, a lot of times, people lot of use anger, manners, you know? manners and stuff like that too, right? Like, you know, nobody has that sort of personal connection with people. Everybody's on the fucking phone. We're a slave to these phones, and so I think yes, that's that it's kind of we've lost that a little bit, you know. Because I I like going to the grocery store. You know, if you're holding a, you see an old lady, and you know this bitch is walking into a house, you, you or a, a store or something, you open the fucking door for her. Because it's being courteous and shit. And see, hearing that in New York, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. And from, you called her a bitch because that is also chivalrous. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we're, we're a pro, you know, we're equal about, about equality here on the show, Dave. You know, male, female. <laughs> That's what's important. Absolutely. Uh, so what <laughs> What are some of the, the shows uh, that you've sort of done uh, while you've been, not even just on, on Compound, but uh, I've, you know, you killed on Legion of Skanks. You guys making fun Thank of you. F- fun of that black girl in the bucket was holy fuck. I sent that to my sister. I'm like, Jesus, check this shit out. It was hilarious. But what are some? Oh, of the- that was terrifying. But it's funny though. It's it, it, and 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 what I actually before before we I'll let you answer that. Uh, in terms of uh, just for a little context of people uh, for people. There was this chick that was essentially living in a fucking bucket. It looked like it could be the worst life ever. And, of course, you know, Lewis, Big J, Dave, and, of course, Dave uh, were making jokes about it. Now, do you find it, uh, again, you seem like the type of person like me, where you can pretty well joke about anything. Do you find that harder yeah. nowadays with uh, political correctness down in the States or... Oh, immensely. I mean, you can feel it in clubs. You know, I, I think it's more inside of, uh, you know, it's I don't want to say inside of a vacuum, but I mean, it's definitely, it, it is a widespread thing, but there are cities that it pertains to more than others. You know, there's parts of New York, parts of like Portland, Oregon, parts of, you know, it depends on where you're at. But yeah, there's definitely a huge sensitivity to everything now because everybody, there's a victim mentality now in society. Mm. Yeah, that and w- everybody is basically competing to either be the victim or be the number one protector of the victim with being a social justice warrior. So, absolutely. Now, part of comedy is you, to deal with something horrible, you make fun of it or you laugh at it. If it hits your own pain, someone else's, mm-hmm. whatever it is. The, the idea that a group of comics would think that a girl who's so deformed – is has to live her life in a bucket is actually funny is is not true but at the same time you make it hilarious you know you can make a million jokes about it because it's so wrong i mean it's it's not that we're unaware of what we're doing we're fully aware that we're punching low and being shitty but that's where the humor lies in that particular context so yeah i mean uh, uh, plenty of people would step forward and just say like you know it's not right and but everybody's looking for a reason to pr- either be a social justice warrior to protect somebody else or to be the largest victim. And it's, you know, that's going to crush society. I Mm -hmm. think is this mentality of there's no, it's all a mob mentality and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just a complete mob mentality. 
And the rush to be offended too. Everybody loves that that adrenaline rush they get. Oh, you know, uh, and and just for example, I don't know if you watch The Simpsons. Fucking Simpsons hasn't been good since like season thirteen. You're a few years older than me, Dave, so you've seen the the progression of The Simpsons. They yeah, are- I watched it from about eighty nine to. 2003 maybe yeah so, well. so, so essentially there was an episode they uh you know revisited the can they you know the simpsons went to canada for like the fucking sixth or seventh time and people are getting right. upset uh, upset because of uh of a joke that they said stupid newfie that was the fucking joke, stupid Noofy, and you got all these fucking pussies going, oh, you know, it's, it's causing a stir, and, it, and half of it's the media, because the media is telling people, hey, uh, this is a, you know, a whole bunch of people are being outraged. Well, no, not a whole bunch of people. One or two loud fucking voices, you know, make it seem like it's a bunch of people, but the way the news portrays that shit is fucking embarrassing. And as a journalist, it's, it's you know, when people go, oh, you're part of the media, it's like, well, not... Quite, because I'm still old school journalists. Like, you know, you got to get your facts right. You're, you're objective. You know, you don't have bias, shit like that. And the fucking news is, is terrible for that nowadays. Well, I mean, there's no news that's not biased. I mean, to be honest, there's no news that's not extremely biased. Mm-hmm. And uh, biased. And if you look at mainstream news, there's not really anyone besides Fox that's even conservative where all the other channels are. Now, you obviously have your Breitbart. Uh, people say compound is that, but I don't agree. Uh, you know, um, so, you, yeah, there's all these different things that it's this very, very small minority who's the loudest right now. And it's not just about making you apologize anymore. It's about getting the attention they need and ruining your life, taking away your job. Uh, it, it's insanity. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it is – it's basically mass bullying where everybody – has permission to let everything wrong in their life out on one specific target. Yeah. And that is extremely dangerous, extremely short-sighted. And, you know, there's really no end game to that. There's no equality to that. And equality doesn't exist if we put another group above another one. Mm -hmm. So it's all, I don't know. It's all just nonsense in my opinion. And like you said, I, I think we're being controlled to a degree and that's not even a conspiracy thing, but I mean, we're addicted to our phones and then we're being fed information uh, that does not have to be have any truth to it whatsoever. We're being fed information, and that's what people react off of. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at the incident in, um, I forgot which Carolina with the tiki torches and oh, you okay, know, yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole Nazi. If you look at that, the news and the mainstream media were just shaking a beehive. And if you start talking about Nazis being somewhere, they're going to start showing up. Mm-hmm. And then people that are anti that. So I mean, there is. They're every bit as responsible for that woman's death as the person who did it. You know, it's it, it, they're sure, the ones that sure. created that chaos. Yeah. Have you uh, and and just for like the way people are are labeled, have you got any any flack or clubs not wanting to work with you because your association with Anthony? Because I I think no. it's I think it's complete bullshit that Ant can't go on Legion of Skanks or allegedly that's what I heard uh, of course, uh, not being able to be on uh, like actually live in the creek in the cave. Correct. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously Legion of Skanks was on Compound for so long. Uh, there's obviously a huge connection there, and Lewis and Anthony are all friends. And for sure. but yeah, there is def- uh, there is an issue with Creek in the Cave. I don't know what it is. Like to be honest, Anthony's not really a shit talker or a backstabber. That's one of the things I like about him, mm-hmm. unless it's public, which obviously he'll do to Opie and other people. Yeah, but yeah. he doesn't even say anything about what happened with the Creek in the Cave. It's just whatever her opinion is of his. So mm-hmm. I don't really know what that's about, but. To answer for me, like, no, I've already been established for 15 years. I work all the same clubs. Everybody knows me. I, you know, I really don't, uh, also on the show, I don't portray anything that I think anybody's really against in that sense, yeah. you know, in the political sense. Anthony and Gavin and uh, Milo, a few people definitely have that reputation for some reason because they were all involved in some element of scandal like anthony getting fired from xm but Mm -hmm. even his is so blown out of proportion that the way that people see him is it's it's just inaccurate oh for sure and uh yeah just that um you know the the sort of 
portraying him in a different light where he seems like a, a really nice guy. You know, I've listened to hours and hours of O and A, uh, him on his own, and he just genuinely. And that's the one thing that I do like about Ray, uh, well, podcasting uh, specifically or web shows or whatever. And the reason that I've been doing it for so long uh, is because you can kind of get a sense for what type of person, uh, you know, that person is, you know, genuinely like you, you are a nice guy, Dave. I can a hundred percent tell you. that you are a nice guy just from watching on, um, just watching the show. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Same with yeah. same with Ant. You can kind of tell who are the cunts and who are who are like genuinely cool people, right? So, I think yes. And with with Anthony, I just find it so crazy that people wouldn't do a show. Uh, people that he gave a career to, when you think about exactly. it, you know, that haven't come back to the show. I, I think that's terrible, to be honest with you. I think it's. You know, all these people, when they needed Opie and Anthony, that was fine. But now you have Anthony on his show. And, yeah, there's definitely, like you said, there's public issues where people are worried about coming back because of political affiliation. And the sad part about that is it's not because of Ant or because they don't like Ant. It's just because of image. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, you know, our image is definitely changing. It's really turning back into a comedy thing. Um, but there, you know, we do have political opinions and he's slightly right. And I am just sort of in the middle and I don't like any of it. And mm -hmm. we're able to comment off of each other. And I don't know, it's, it's a good thing, you know, to, to be able to put that out there. For sure. Um, for, uh, just the show now, uh, as it is, do you guys kind of, or do you view it as kind of like the old O and a show a little bit in the sense of you're bringing on comics that maybe don't have uh, that much notoriety. Like I, I was brought aware uh, again all the Legion of Skanks through Compound Media. Uh, yourself, um, just off the top of my head, guys like Will Noonan would have never knew who yeah. this guy was unless he Great. was on uh, on the on the uh, Anthony Cumia show. Of course, with Dave Landau available CompoundMedia.com. So go and subscribe. Thank you. You gotta get, gotta get the plugs in there, Dave. But do you view that kind yeah. of gi giving those comics a chance and and a platform? Yeah, man, I really do. Uh, it, even when I got it, one of the first things I did was I brought on like Matt Holt and Derek Richards and a couple of people that I know are just really funny, who I thought would fit. And yeah, I think it is that in a sense. I mean, nothing will ever be, I think, as big as the old O and A, but. I think we have something similar here. We have Norton coming in a little bit more and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, the whole thing is what I loved about ONA was it's also what I like about Bob and Tom and some other bigger shows in the States and even Stern, like when he introduces to Schimmel and, uh, you know, all those guys, uh, it, it really does. Uh, it really is that, you know, it's sort of that older radio where you just bring in comics, let them be comics, talk, shoot the shit, you know, on this show, it's a slightly different because we do a lot of topics as opposed to just sort of a, a round table of just whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, uh, it's definitely a, it's definitely a similarity and people, I guess are noticing the similarity to old O and a, cause that's the messages I get. And I think that's a pretty cool thing for sure. And boozy boxing was a great example that reminded me of, of the homeless shopping spree, which I still listen to every, uh, every now and then if I got a long drive, uh, Oh, it's or, the best dude. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Having a, a blind guy fight a drunk guy. It was pretty, uh, and well, they were both drunk too. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a fantastic mm. day to watch, uh, two grown men with uh, boxing gloves yeah. that were made of uh, pool floaties yeah. beat the shit out of each other in the hallway. And it's, and it's incorporating something that the old ONA show never had. And that's video, which again, I can't, uh, I can't listen to you guys. I have to watch the show. I have to do it because it, I've gotten used to that, right? I, Opie and Anthony never had that visual element unless it was like through pal talk or something like that. So to, right. to have Ant's show, you know, start off, you know, with down in his basement and ex, expand and stuff like that, but also including vi, uh, video elements, you know, going out in the hallway. Yeah, it wasn't far, but still it was, it was cool. They did that squirting episode too, uh, um, before it was even the AA show for for that seven months, uh, where they were trying to test if it was piss or squirt or uh, you know actual like yeah, where squirt. they put the tarp on Bobo and the girl uh, yeah, yes, yeah. rained on him yeah, so it was it's and cool. Her shit sister like that. was on the show yesterday. Oh, was she? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, shows her tits and oh, of course, the, you know, the, the typical typical whore porn stuff. star guest. <laughs> yes, the typical whore. Uh, what's some of uh, and I, I'm assuming the horror probably isn't on the the top of the list on on favorite guests, Dave, that you guys have had on the show. Uh, who've been some of your uh, your favorites that you've got to got to meet? And I see RVD was on there, and Lanny Dykstra, fucking tremendous episode that was. Yeah, man. I well, and I was a huge fan of ECW, and I knew his manager Same. was lucky enough to be able to get him in. So that was that was really cool for me, man. But. You know, it's it's interesting. It's kind of people I didn't know before, like uh, Don Jameson, um, Brian Johnson from Comic Book Men, Will Noonan. Um, God, there's there's so many. It's 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 interesting. Like some of the people I have the most fun. Brandon Collins is really good. Um, even uh, Shane McGillis, I had already known. But honestly, it's it's cool to meet a lot of these legends. But it's it's even cooler to meet people that I didn't know before who are like minded. Mm-hmm. And those are some of my favorite episodes. Is just sitting next to somebody. I mean, I got to meet a lot of great people. I, I never met Jim Norton before. I'd never met Voss before. I knew Bobby Kelly. That was the only one of like that whole group I knew. Um, you know, so it's pretty interesting the people that I've. I mean, I never thought that I'd be sitting there cracking jokes with like Ann Coulter mm-hmm. and Jim Florentine, who you know I used to watch on Crank Yankers when I was high in college. So, yeah, yeah man, I guess Rob Van Dam was definitely one of the top ones though to meet, and that was uh, that was incredible. The whole fucking show right there. I loved ECW back in the. Well, I guess dude, I, I loved getting to ask him questions and yeah. there's only one moment where I asked him something where I, I, I don't know if it upset him, but I called him down real quick. I uh, just, so <laughs> we were talking about the concussions and being able to wrestle and, you know, he's pretty adamant that he wants to wrestle. So, but I just wasn't sure with 300 concussions, if a, you know, a doctor would have said, you know, with the double vision, cause in the, in the documentary, the doctor says you have double vision. Maybe you shouldn't go on the road. And I don't know if I was not supposed to bring that up in the interview, but it was cool how once he realized I, I wasn't trying to like get over on him, you know, cause some radio show hosts can be pricks like oh, that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he, he was really open and honest and cool and he even stayed and hung out with Lenny. Well, and it wasn't like you were making any Chris Benoit jokes or anything, Dave. So it's not like no, you know, I do those when he's not present. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, just a couple, yeah. a couple more questions, because again, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, just as a as a, a working traveling comic, and you're kind of. You know, you know how Jimmy back in the day would leave, he'd go on, uh, you know, on the road, he'd go to a place for a weekend. So you're kind of doing that with uh, with your guys show. Uh, what's that sort of life like uh, being a working comic? Is it is it hard on on, uh, on your family? I know you have a, a, a wife and a, and a kid and stuff like that. Or are you really digging the digging the road? Um. Well, I. Uh... I, I've been used to it for so many years. Okay. Um, it's never easy to be away for several days, but there's so many things you could do that you could do. So as far as when I was a comic, I had so much, um, I don't want to say free time, but I had a lot more downtime, more family time. And now mm-hmm. with the radio show and comedy, it's certainly go, go, go. I mean, I'm pretty much performing every single day. And that is definitely a little bit difficult, um, but I love it. It's what I do. Uh, my family comes with me a lot of the time now. No, that's um, great. That's great. I, yeah, when I'm not performing, my son is, you know, 100% everything, you know. Uh, you know, he's the top priority of everything anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's like you just have to make it work when you want something. And, you know, f- financially, Anthony is very, you know, they're very kind to me, and I'm very happy with, you know, my contract there so you know it's it's you just have to take the good with the bad it's like any other job and i'm grateful that i'm able to do this you know i had uncles that were traveling salesmen and shit like that so to be able to do something you love is a rare thing oh for sure and and it's a whole reason i moved i think it was like 4420 kilometers across the country because I honestly I haven't worked since January 2017, uh, the last day I read Water Meters. Because I, I, I go around, I do stories. Uh, Marconi and I do a, a bunch of projects, like video projects, or I'm doing my show, which, again, my show isn't, 
you know, my show isn't your guy's show, but it's still something that I really enjoy doing. And it's something that keeps me, you know, doing these skills and, and, and just having content out there consistently. Right. So when you're doing something you love, you never, it never feels like work and it's great. One thing I do love about, uh, about your guy's show before I, uh, before I let you go, Dave, of course, uh, I do love, uh, you guys joking in the old timey voice. That's great. And I also love when you break down, uh, you specifically break down movies, uh, but just having the, again that video element of of you know back in the old O and A show riding my bus riding the bus with my sister you know retarded Rosie O'Donnell we I just had to hear that <laughs> but then when you get to actually see that fat pig on on screen and you know see her portraying somebody who's ha- you know has a mental disability it's way much way better and especially you guys getting to comment a on different it and stuff. mental disability yeah well. <laughs> And that, uh, yeah, she, <laughs> you see she her is, painting, uh, you see yeah. her paintings on Twitter. She's there's fucking something not right there, Dave. It's this. Yeah. It's, what, it's like what somebody with dementia does, yeah. you know, in an old folks home. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, no, the video element's cool as hell. You know, I, uh, I went to film school for a year and I made a movie, which is the King of Detroit. If, so you got to throw the plug in. If you have Amazon Prime of or course. Amazon Prime Canada, I have no idea what it is there. Is it different? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, other the other uh, when I order shit off Amazon, it's just Amazon.ca. So I think you could probably get it on. I think Prime probably goes cross borders or something. I'm not 100 percent sure though. But yeah, definitely go. Yeah, to- I, I don't know what. It, yeah, it's but it is on Amazon Prime. It's mm. the king of Detroit, and um, yeah, I. I love the video element just because I'm able to review movies, put the trailers up, recommend ones. Um, and people have been very responsive to that, which is cool. I like when I can recommend a movie and somebody actually enjoys it. Um, but I put it, you know, it's really cool to have the actual visual because there's so many more jokes you can add when other people can see it. For sure. And I think that's why you like the way you see this video more, you know, I mean, it's just once people have that actual visual, you can just hit it, hit it, hit it. So it just adds to it. Absolutely. And I, I do, uh, I, I dig the, the video element and I like, I, I like, again, I like bad movies. So I'm, I'm again, it's... bad movies are good movies sometimes, you know, like I love predator too, for how much of, oh, well, even alien versus predator. I love the alien series. I love the first predator. How much of a dog shit film that was. I still enjoy it. Right. So, Oh, it's a masterpiece. And it was done. I was like 2004, 1990. What year was it? I think the uh, the movie came out in 2004. I think alien versus predator. That was alien versus predator, but predator two came out in 92 or 91 or 92. I believe 91 or 92. Yeah. Maybe Danny lover. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that movie is. I think it takes place in 1999. Mm-hmm. Oh, like future? Which, yeah, the 90, yes. uh, 97. Um, because they 97, yeah. Because yeah. it had Gary Busey in it too, and uh, somebody else I'm forgetting uh, his name. But yeah, it's just fucking dog shit. And that was the future. Oh, I love when it's like, but they look at five years into the future at that time, and it's just mm-hmm. it's insane that anybody would. <laughs> just assume that that transition would have happened. It's oh, so funny. Absolutely. Like, yeah, I love it. Well, Roadhouse is an absolute masterpiece. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's so many good ba- Point Break. It's a, you know, there's so many good bad movies. For sure. But and you know that's what makes them good though. It's fucking entertaining to just to watch and kind of you know. Even if you're sitting there by yourself, I love to throw out a quote or every now and then when you're watching that shit, right? So. Uh, oh, I love it, and and uh, you know, there's, uh, I love comedy, obviously. Like your country gave us what I consider the best sketch show of all time, which was Kids in the Hall, and I grew up watching it because being on the border of Canada, I don't know if CBC is that common around the country, but uh, I grew up watching that like the night it came on, and that mm. was, uh, yeah, you, you guys have some good comedy over there. See, I, it, that was a little bit before my time just because, uh, well, I was born on, in 1990, right? So I, okay. I, I grew up even with like shows like Kenny versus Spenny uh, because like I obviously I wasn't watching that shit when I was like eight. But when I was in my teenage years, Kenny versus Sp- sure. Spenny, Trailer Park Boys r- was very influential, shit like that. So yeah, they yeah. Canada has some, we have some gems up here, Dave. And definitely when, when you're able to come up to Canada, definitely come up to, uh, I wanted to, to plug, of course, my friend's comedy club, the corner comedy club in Toronto. 
great club to, to work. So if you're looking for a place in Toronto, definitely go check that place out. Uh, yeah, I would love to do that. And it's, uh, uh July, um, what is it? Seventh. I'm allowed back in Canada after 10 years. Fuck so. yeah. And, what, <laughs> well, be. and I used to work there a lot back in the day. I used to do the yuck yucks chain and some other stuff. And mm-hmm. I haven't been back sadly enough. Well, you know, th- things happen, Dave, things happen and you move forward and now you're, you're c- going to come back. So it, it's, it's all that matters. Yeah. You cleaned, I cleaned up, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, for people interested, of course, uh, check out Dave's uh, stand-up gigs and, and check out his website at davelandau.com, D-A-V-E-L-A-N-D-A-U.com. Check him out on Facebook, follow Dave on Twitter, Landau Dave, and then on Instagram as well, DT Landau. Uh, and like, like Dave said, check out The King of Detroit, available on Amazon. So... Yes, sir. Dave, thank you very much, uh, my friend, for for taking time and and coming on the show. And I really appreciate it, man. It was a good conversation. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you having me on. And, of course, uh, everybody else, you can follow me on Twitter, Maskell91, Maskell Podcasting Network on iTunes. Check out all the shit we have at libertymultimedia.com. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.